that uh, this uh, plane with the uh, that blue and white camel against that blue and white sky almost disappears. What's going on guys? We are back out here at the parking lot today and uh, we have a maid in here and uh, this plane needs no introduction. We all know what it is. It's the E-Flight F-15. Um, I pulled the trigger and, and finally got one. I don't know what took me so long to get one. Um, but I finally have one. And as always, I always add rudders to my rudderless planes, as you see there. They're actually uh, arrow servos. But yeah, we're gonna get a maiden on this guy and get her up flying. AR630, it comes with uh, pre-installed. Um, I bound it up the way that the book says to bind it with a bind plug. Um, and I might actually rebind it in the future um, using the uh, the bind button that it actually has. Um, mainly because it's pre-programmed from the factory and when you go into forward programming on this plane, it doesn't give you options to um, adjust any of the uh, the the bank angle limits or um, or anything really. And uh, most of the times with these, with because I have a couple of AR630s and a couple of my other planes, and I typically um, put the 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 gain control on the uh, on the roll knob. And uh, this one doesn't allow you to do it um, through forward programming. So I might rebind it using the bind button, and hopefully um, just like do the, the setting um, all on my own and um, that way I can have con more control over it but uh, with all that said let's uh, get this plane taxied out and uh, get it in place and get a maiden on this guy um, I did a little bit of ground test and uh, it's got a super wide turning radius um, even with the the rudder uh, trimmed all the way out um, do have a little bit of wind to deal with comes and goes, it gusts up into the teens from time to time. All right, should be good about there. All right, so the wind is picking up a little bit here. Um, it's not too much. Um, I'd rather it to be calm, but it's what it is. We'll take what we can get. And against my better judgment, I am gonna attempt to take off in safe. Uh, the one thing is the sun's like right dead smack in the middle of the the runway right as I take off uh, one of the reasons I am tr uh, gonna try to take off in safe um, I just hope it has enough um, pitch up and I don't want to be aborting the runoff down there because I don't have a lot of room so let's cross our fingers and uh, let's go flying oh. Oh. she is up easily she was all kinds of squirrely um, on that runoff. And yeah, let's get out of get out of safe. I don't know what I just what switch that I hit there. Am I yeah I am out of safe. My fingers I have fat finger to switch and I don't know what switch it was. And I'm assuming uh, all right I think I hit the uh, high rate switch and I am out of safe and I have a roll to the right so we're gonna attempt to trim that out and bring her back at the same time as I fly into the Sun here Seems to be fine. Um, seems to be lacking in the elevator department. One thing I noticed, it's still got to roll to the right. It might be the wind just pushing it. One thing that I did notice with this plane is um, kind of flying behind my back here. I'm just trying to get it trimmed out. One thing that I did notice is that the elevators don't have any spars in them. So they're really, really flimsy. I'm 
almost lost orientation there. Seems to be flying. I don't know if I still have that roll to the right there. We're gonna click the rudders over because I feel like that might be a problem. That elevator is very, very, very washy. I don't like it. I'm gonna need to dial in more elevator throw. I don't really like how the elevator is really, really, really fl uh, flimsy. I am flying on a Liberia Pro 75C, shoved all the way back as far as I can get it to get the CG right. And we're gonna start looking at some landings here because it's gonna be time to, yeah, the timer's counting down and I haven't even looked at any approaches yet. All right, there's the timer out. I should have enough uh, battery life left. Sliding a little bit, we're gonna throttle off there. I don't know if I'm gonna take this or not. Cause it is floating a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna abort that. I want a shallower approach. Only cause I like a run out of room down there. So if I let it go flying past me too much, um, I don't want the runoff to be too long. All right, we're gonna throttle off there and let her sink in the place as the wind's taking her. We are gonna take this approach. Perfect. And hope to not hit that lamp post over there. With the super wide turning radius that it has. I think it turns harder more, it's wider to more to one uh, side than it is to the other side. Or get her back over here. All right, and that is the maiden for the E Flight F15 Eagle. Um, and I'll show you what I mean on the elevator. Uh, watch as the entire surface moves up. I don't, know if, I don't know if the camera can catch that. If you see like the side of the elevator, like the whole entire surface kind of moves up and down. Um, actually, I think I see, I was watching uh, Brian Phillips' video now that I remember. And he said the same thing, that the elevator was very, very washy. And I actually think that he moved the um, the linkage to the inner hole, I think, to give it more throw. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. I can pick this up. Yeah, so I think what he did was he moved his uh, from the outer hole to the uh, middle hole, or even the inner hole. That's gonna give you more throw. And, um, actually might even move this to the outer hole here and then this one to the inner hole here and that should give me more throw in the elevator because um it is it is very wash because it is a uh, very washy in the elevator department um there were some times that i thought i wasn't gonna uh pull up like i came down out of a roll over here and man like i was full stick and it, I, I didn't think i was gonna pull up out of the dive my nose cone kind of came up there a little bit but yeah we'll play with the rates we'll get her dial dialed in and um and we'll definitely have more flights on it all right we're gonna get another quick flight in i did change the um the linkage position at the servo i did move it to the outer hole and then as i as i was taxiing out i realized i didn't put the clevis in to the middle hole like i wanted i actually put it right back to the <laughs> outer hole but uh, I did dial in the higher. I'm at 100% uh, rate on the elevator now. So um, we're just gonna try it like that. Um, I didn't feel like bringing it back and redoing that. So um, I was on a lower rate on the elevator on the first flight anyway. So now I'm at 100% rate on the elevator with the rod linkage at the servo on the outer hole instead of the inner hole, the way they tell you to do it on the manual. All right, let's get this thing going. I gotta anticipate uh, the way it turns on me, on the ground handling. And um, I'm not in safe, I'm only in AS3X here. Let's 
it's uh you ankle on that elevator that actually feels so much better now yeah oh yeah one thousand percent better that is way 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 better that first time man i couldn't even i felt like i couldn't even pull out of a dive but man this plane is uh as advertised by everyone else it actually does fly really nice and it's actually pretty fast too oh yeah this plane actually flies really nice i was skeptical i mean i knew it was gonna fly nice it's just the build quality of it leaves much to be desired i mean comparing it to um like the xfly t7 uh, I have the free wing 64 millimeter uh, Raptor and uh, the F-18 as well. And those planes are, the quality of them are just way, way better than this plane. They're a little bit bigger too. This plane's actually kind of small. It's smaller than the other 64 millimeter birds. And it's weird the way they run the wires, like for the servo wires, they're all externally ran and they're like pressed into the, the body. Uh, and I'll show that at the end of the video because I want to show how the wires are. Man, it's... I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to disappear as much as it does against that backdrop of the sky. But man, she's flying really, really nice. I wonder if it'll high alpha. I don't know if it'll, it will. Flying over my head and into the sun I go awesome not recommended to go flying into the sun like that Whew. Now I got a nice little ray in my eyeball <laughs> from the sun as I fly over my head I'm just getting the feel for this plane so I'm on 75% aileron 100% elevator and the rudders are uh, I think as well on 75 or 80 some, some, somewhere around there as the wind picks up and my timer kicks down counts down which is not nice and I'm kind of into the wind or not I'm with the wind here so I might have to reverse this and land from the opposite direction because the way the winds kicking up And I don't like this because the sun's over there. And even though I am a little bit lower, I am way, way high. So let's cheat that. And just let her drop here. Throttle off. Kind of into the wind. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go back around. I didn't like that at all. I was headed toward the curb over there. Not good. All right, trying to walk down a little bit further from where I was positioned. I'm throttle off here, nosing down. Just no throttle, kind of pulling some power back in. Rudder back over, just, just gonna have to take that. All right, it's good enough. The wind completely picked up. I'm sure you hear it blowing in the camera now. Cause it's like come, coming right at me. It was super calm and then all of a sudden, as soon as I wanted to land, you already know what happens. All right, so repositioning that rod linkage worked um, and dialing in 100% rate on that elevator. Um, made the plane fly way, way better. Um, and the plane is as advertised. Um, it does fly as good as everyone says this plane flies. This plane actually amazes me. Um, like I said, the build quality to me leaves a little, leaves much to be desired. It, it looks really cheaply built, in my opinion, compared to the other 64 millimeters in this class. This plane looks, it's just, it, it looks cheap to me anyway. So real quick, I flipped the plane upside down. I just want to show um, how I ran the wires for the, um, for the rudders. As you see there, this plane had some panel lines that ran back here so I just used that panel line and cut into it and sunk my wires in and then I made this channel here and ran them in because all the wires run in underneath this uh this plastic uh piece here and um just like I said the wires all run externally you can see the servo wire the servos here and the wires are pressed here 
and they actually um they're covered by a decal but they're instead of going into the fuselage like most other planes do this one just is external runs up runs up all the way here the length of this so you can see the decal there and into the this this plastic piece underneath the plane where all the wires run in the ESC is in conclusion however this plane is absolutely it's a good plane it's it, it, it's a must buy if you like 64 millimeter planes that are you know the, I, I love the 64 millimeter class of planes because they're so easy to transport you throw them all in the back seat of your car go to the field you have a ball you throw them back in the back seat of your car and you go back home like it's it's very easy listen flying bigger planes is is definitely better than flying the little planes but uh these are just so easy to transport and uh and they are fun and this plane is actually uh pretty fun as well but yeah that's gonna be it for me for today and um i'll catch you guys in the next one